Joining us now for the interview is former Vermont governor and chairman of the Democratic National Committee during the last presidential election, Howard Dean. Governor Dean, it's good to see you. Thanks for being here. Rachel, thanks for having me on. So what we have learned today from Roll Call is that the group Freedom Works is going to transition itself from an activist group to being a big, well-funded, get-out-the-vote operation for the Republican Party. Is that going to materially change strategic considerations for the next election? Well, I think it will, but although the court, the Supreme Court, the four radical right justices, uh, uh, plus the conservative Anthony Kennedy, have teamed up to really make it possible to buy America. What you see is the slow erosion of American democracy. These people that are doing these things, the Koch brothers, they don't really fundamentally believe in democracy. They really are stripping the votes. The New Hampshire speaker, for example, said that college students shouldn't be allowed to vote in New Hampshire because they're too liberal and they don't understand what's going on. Um, look, you can attack unions and we can argue about whether that's a good thing or not. I obviously don't think it is. But when you're taking away fundamentally people's right to vote, when you're investing enormous amounts from anonymous billionaires uh, in, in getting your people to vote and keeping other people from voting by influencing politicians. These governors that went out there, they're bought and paid for by billionaires. And this does not help the ordinary American working people. It doesn't even help most pe party uh, people in the Tea Party, uh, in the real Tea Party, the grassroots people. And I think these, this is going to, uh, they're going to get paid back for this in this election. Is why I think Obama is going to win by a lot. One of the things that we have seen happy, happen, particularly in the Republican Party over the last couple of years, is that the sort of functions, the organizational functions of the party have been allowed to sort of shrink and, and atrophy, both in terms of fundraising, the parties themselves not keeping up with these outside groups, but also some of the organizational functions. The Republican Party, as recently as a couple election cycles ago, had this sort of vaunted get out the vote effort. And even though they did very well in the 2010 elections, it wasn't because of a real evidence an organizational structure on the ground in most states, even in the battleground states. As these things sort of become private and leave the parties, is there an accountability issue and a transparency issue about how those things are funded? Sure and where there they is. Come from? I mean, nobody knows where that money comes from. Uh, Chevron, for example, in Prudential Insurance gave $2 million apiece to the Chamber of Commerce, which ran these horrendous ads, most of which weren't true in the last election cycle. Well, I mean, we at least know from the 10Ks that Chevron and Prudential did that, so obviously I don't use Chevron gas or wouldn't buy anything from Prudential as a result. But these donors to these things, they really could. We, you couldn't tell if the Chinese gave them a lot of money. We know that foreign corporations' money gave the, uh, were, was given to the Chamber of Commerce in the last election cycle. We can't prove it was used in the elections. It was all mingled together, though. They could be. But I think there's a greater danger than whether the Chinese are giving money to Freedom Works. I think the Koch brothers are a danger to America. Uh, uh, what, what they uh, put together enough money in the Tea Party which so they won the Raleigh uh, school district in North Carolina and they got rid of the desegregation policy. This is not a, a, a group of people that are in favor of America. Uh, this is a group of people who want to take over America so they can get richer and they're fundamentally mean people that hate working people in this country and I think we're going to have to make some changes and I think the American people are going to make changes. Do Democrats at this point see their challenge as finding their own billionaires who they like better? Uh, or do Democrats have a qualitatively different challenge here? I mean, is there a way to compete with this other than fire with fire? Uh, there's going to be some of that, but I think the real way to compete with it is, the, what, is what the president's doing and what he did in the last election, which is have a terrific grassroots organization. Ordinary people can fight back for this. The, the fact of the matter is that ordinary people who believe in themselves can always beat back those handful of greedy rich people that are doing this. And most, most rich people aren't like this. They're just a few far-right people, like the Koch brothers, who believe that their wealth entitles them to much more than anybody else has in this country. I don't think that's part of the American dream. I don't think the average person, Republican, Independent, or Democrat, believes that's how America should be run. One, and I think the more this comes to light, the fewer and fewer people are going to be impressed with the Tea Party and the Koch brothers and the, and the Republican Party. To the, to the extent that political institutions matter, that it is not just the, the preferences of the people uh, sort of uh, magically or directly translated into policy, to the extent that the way things run affects the outcomes. We just had the ruling from the Supreme Court this week that Arizona's publicly financed election system is unconstitutional, that, that, the, state, that, the, that the state of Arizona, according to the Supreme Court, is not allowed to give people public financing in a way that levels the playing field between publicly financed candidates and self-financed rich guys candidates. Are we, now, are we now looking at a position, though, in which not only we've got a Citizens United sort of corporate-funded 
atmosphere, but the ability for public policy to sort of remedy that is being hampered, that there isn't going to be a possibility for public fin publicly financed elections as a way around this problem. Well, you know, this, this is a very political Supreme Court. They're bought and paid for essentially by the same people that elected George W. Bush, George H. W. Bush, and Ronald Reagan, who basically put the majority of the Supreme Court on. What do you expect them to do? They are basically selling America to corporations. But that can be fixed, too, over time. Uh, Barack Obama has, has, has appointed two very solid middle-of-the-road justices, and hopefully he'll get a chance to appoint a couple more, and we'll have a Supreme Court that's more in keeping with where America really wants to go. I don't believe that this Supreme Court represents anything like what the average American believes. I do not believe that most Americans think that a corporation ought to have the same rights as a person. Uh, but that's what this Supreme Court has given them. So this is a court which is very much uh, in the business of uh, equating money with rights. And of course, they are giving our rights away to the big corporations, which are, after all, are a creation of our own state. So I, that has to be fixed. Look, the Republicans have been 30 years doing this, and it's going to take some time to fix the damage. Uh, but I think we can do it. It's, if we all stick together and we all work hard, I really do think we can do it. Howard Dean, former chairman of the Democratic Party, thanks for your time tonight.